Hello friends, today in this session we will discuss dense graded bitmus macadam popularly known as DBM as given in IRC 111 of 2009 and I will tell you design, construction and quality control as suggested in the IRC code. DBM is a bitmus layer which is used as a base course or a binder course and it can be laid either in one layer or in multiple layers depending upon the requirement of the design. It is also used as part of overlay for strengthening of the pavements. And thickness of each layer can be 50 to 100 millimeter depending upon the aggregate size. It is laid with mechanized paver with proper control on quality of construction as laid down in section 900 of Ministry of Road Transport and Highway Specifications of 2013. Material for preparing the mix for DBM are same as used for any other bitmus layer, the aggregate, the filler and the binder. The bitumen for dense graded bitmus macadam shall comply with Indian standard specification for VG paving bitumen as given in IIS 73 or in IS 154624 for modified binders. IRC 111 provides some guidelines for selection of the binder and it suggests that in cases where you have high stressed area like intersections or near toll booth, truck parking loads or for roads with giant traffic of more than 20 MSA, VG40 should invariably be used. For roads with design traffic less than 20 MSA, VG30 can be used and for paving in cold and very cold climate, even VG10 or VG20 can also be used. But IRC 37 2018 suggests that VG40 used in base or binder course should have a minimum viscosity of 3600 poise at 60 degrees centigrade. Both highest daily te mean temperature and the lowest daily mean temperature should be considered while selecting the gear of the binder. And this table provides some guidelines for lowest daily mean temperature more than minus 10 degrees centigrade and highest daily mean temperature less than 20 or 20 to 30 or more than 30 degrees centigrade how the grade of the binder should be selected. When commercial vehicles exceeds 2000 vehicles per day per lane and the highest daily temperature exceeds 40 degrees centigrade, VG40 or modified binder is suggested for the top layer of DBM. Course aggregate, course aggregates are defined as the material retained on 2.36 millimeter sieve. It should be from crushed strokes or crushed gravel. The course aggregates should be clean, hard, durable and of cubical shape which are free from dust and of low porosity. When crushed gravel is proposed, then 95% aggregate retained on 4.75 mm sieve will have at least two fractured faces. Now it is important because fractured faces provide good interlocking and friction between the aggregate and hence give more stability to the mix. Aggregate will be of low porosity satisfying the properties as given in this table. Cleanliness which is just through grain size distribution and percent passing 75 microns should be less than 5. Similarly particle shape which is fluckiness around gas index combined should be less than 35 percent. Strength either abrasion value or impact value and durability is determined through soundness test and after five cycles of wetting and drying in sodium sulfate this loss should not be more than 12 percent and if the solution is magnesium sulfate then it should be 18 percent. This test is generally conducted when the aggregate fails in water absorption. When water absorption is more than 2 percent then we invariably go for durability test. The stripping test that is coating test at least 95 percent area should be coated and water sensitivity is measured in terms of retained tensile strength which should be at least 80 percent. The fine aggregates which can be either crushed or naturally occurring mineral materials passing 2.36 millimeter and retained on 75 millimeter sieve. 
the send equivalent value of fine aggregate should be 50 or more and plasticity index of friction passing 425 micron should be less than 4. When the DBM is used as a binder course, then it is suggested not to use natural sand as a fine aggregate. But if the DBM is used as a base course, then up to 50% sand can be used. Filler is the material which passes through 75 micron and it is finely divided mineral matter such as rock dust, hydrated lime or cement or even crusher dust can also be used as a filler satisfying the requirement of the grading. It should pass 100% through 600 micron sieve, 95 to 100% through 300 micron sieve and 85 to 100% through 75 micron sieve. The grading of aggregate, the combined grading after mixing the coarse aggregate, fine aggregate and the filler should satisfy the requirement as given in this table and it depends upon the layer thickness. For layer thickness of 75 to 100 millimeter which is called DBM1, this is the grading which should be satisfied and for layer thickness of 50 to 75 millimeter which is called DBM2, it is the grading. This is the grading which should be satisfied. The binder content for DBM1 should be minimum 4% and for DBM2 it is 4.5%. But actual binder content is to be estimated through job mix formula. The procedure for design of mix is same as we adopt for any other mix and it is as given in MS2. The first step is to test the aggregate and binder for their suitability in the road construction, particularly in the layer of DBM. And once you declare that the aggregate and binder are suitable for road construction, the next step is to proportion the aggregate to get the desired grading. Because at site, generally aggregates are available in different lots of 20 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 6 millimeter and stone dust, or it may be in 40 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 10 millimeter and stone dust and filler and these are to be proportioned to get the desired grading. And there can be several methods of proportioning of aggregates. In one of the videos, I have discussed three methods, trial and error method, analytical method and graphical method. And you can refer this video to get the idea how to get proportioning of aggregates. Once you proportion the aggregate, then we carry out the mixed design. Marshall method of mixed design is recommended for DBM also and you can watch another video on Marshall method of mixed design to get the details how to determine the optimum binder content. The job mix formula for DBM should satisfy the following parameters. The compaction, the stability at 60 degree centigrade should be 9 kN at least for viscosity gate binder and 10 to 12 kN for modified binders. The flow value, the air wires, the VFB that is wires filled with bitumen and TSR that is tensile strength ratio should be at least 80%. The wires in mineral aggregate depend upon the nominal size of aggregates and this is what IRC 111 suggests for VMA for DBM that for nominal size of aggregate 37.5 that is DBM1 and viscosity grade binder this should be the value of minimum VMA and for modified binder these are the values. The preparation of job mix formula is explained in another video on Marshall method of mix design you can watch that video the link is given in the description box and DBM may be constructed either in a single layer or in two layers depending upon the design thickness requirement. When it is constructed in one layer, then either DBM1 or DBM2 depending upon the thickness of the layer. But when it is constructed in two layers, then the first layer is DBM1 and then second layer is DBM2 and above DBM2 we provide a surface course or the wearing course. For longer life of bitumen payment and to avoid moisture induced distresses, 
and for better resistance to bottom up cracking, IRC 37-2018 suggest a bitumen rich DBM bottom layer. This rich bottom mix is designed to have more binder volume by selecting lower design air wires and then this layer should be compacted to smaller in place air wires. For one layer of DBM, the target air wires in the mix design should be 3.5%. But when the DBM is laid in two layers, then bottom DBM layer should be compacted to 3% air wires and upper layer as per design practice. The tensile strength ratio is determined after you prepare the job mix formula to see the moisture induced damage of the mix and this method is given in ASTO T283. In this test, six Marshall specimens are prepared at 7 plus minus 0.05 percent air wires and three of these specimens are tested for ITS under dry condition and three are tested after partial saturation and moisture conditioning with a freeze thaw cycle. The complete procedure of determining TSR is given in another video on ITS and TSR. You can watch this video for detail of this test. The TSR value should be at least 80%. Once you declare that the job mix formula will satisfy all requirements of strength and durability, then next step is to carry out the plant trial. And this is done to establish that the plant can produce uniform mix as per job mix formula. And when individual sample is taken, then the permissible variation of the various ingredients in the actual mix from the JMF shall be within the permissible limit as given in this table. The aggregate passing 90 mm or larger size can have a variation of plus minus 8 percent from approved job mix formula and similarly for other sieve sizes. The bitumen content can be in plus minus 0 0.3 from job mix formula. Now, after ensuring that the plant can produce the mix as per JMF, the laying trials are carried out to establish that the mix can be successfully laid and compacted. And laying trial is done in 100 meter square area and density of the finished paving layer is checked and compared with laboratory density. The construction steps are normally same as generally for any other types of bitumen layer. The first step is to prepare the base and it will involve cleaning of the surface, filling of the portholes and sealing of the cracks and joints are carried out. Then we apply tack coat or prime coat as the case may be. If the existing surface is of a granular type, then prime coat is applied and above that tack coat is applied. If the existing surface is of bituminous type, then tack coat is applied as per IRC 16. The mixing temperature, transporting temperature and laying temperature can be decided based on the bitumen grade. And the binder temperature, aggregate temperature, mixed material temperature, laying temperature, and rolling temperature are as per given in this table. Controls in the field are to be exercised as given in section 900 of MORTH specification 2013 and it has some guidelines for surface finishing, surface Evenness and surface roughness are not the consideration for DBM because it is a layer above which you will place another layer of wearing cores. But control test on binder, aggregate and mixture is certainly done. Mix grading is to be checked at least two tests per day. Binder content one test per 400 tons of mix produced or minimum of two tests per day and similarly Temperature during laying, compaction and rolling is to be checked at regular interval and density of compacted layer should be checked at least one sample per 700 meter square area. The acceptance criteria is based on statistical analysis of these data. For density, there should be a minimum of three samples and for marshal stability, there should be a minimum of two samples and 
the mean value of these n number of samples should be more than or equal to specified value as per job mix formula plus 1.65 minus 1.65 upon square root of n into standard deviation. That is how you accept the criteria. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your comments in the comment box.